Welcome to our review of presidential succession. No examination of the executive branch would be complete without considering the question, what happens if the president dies? Presidential succession is determined by the presidential succession law of 1947. But sometimes incapacitation other than death prevents presidents from fulfilling their duties. In such cases, the 25th Amendment, ratified in 1967, determines the course of action. When the president dies, the course of action is clear in the most cases. The president, vice president, excuse me, is, assumes the presidency. Such was the situation when Harry Truman became president upon FDR's death from natural causes in 1945, and when LBJ was sworn in as president after the assassination of JFK in 1963. Vice presidents sometimes fill the unexpired term of their president for reasons other than the president's death, as when Gerald Ford acceded to the presidency upon the resignation of Richard Nixon after the Watergate scandal. The Presidential Succession Law of 1947, the AP likes to ask you about that, determines president's presidential succession if the vice president also dies or is unable to govern. This chart shows that after the vice president, the next in line for the presidency is the Speaker of the House of Representatives, then the president pro temp of the Senate, followed by a specified order of members of the cabinet. Notice that as new cabinet departments have been established, their secretaries have been added to the bottom of the line of succession. As a precaution, at the State of the Union address, each year one cabinet member is chosen not to attend the president's speech before Congress, but rather to stay behind at the White House. This measure ensures that if a catastrophe should occur in Congress during the address, someone in the line of succession will be able to assume the duties of the president. You don't need to know this whole list. If you can do the top four, then you're in good shape for the AP. What happens when a president is alive but unable to carry out the responsibilities of the office? Until the ratification of the 25th Amendment in 1967, the course of action was not clear. Such was the case in 1881 when an assassinate shot President James Garfield, and Garfield lived two and a half months before succumbing to his injuries. Sorry for the delay. In another such instance, President Woodrow Wilson was so ill during his last months in office that he was incapacitated. First Lady Edith Wilson assumed some of his responsibilities and decision making. Questions about presidential health also arose towards the end of FDR's tenure, and during the Eisenhower administration, the president authorized Vice President Richard Nixon to determine whether Eisenhower, who was battling a series of illnesses, was competent to govern. President Kennedy, who suffered from a host of physical ailments, including severe chronic back pain and Addison's disease, similarly empowered Vice President LBJ. In an informal agreement, the men arranged that if Kennedy was physically unable to communicate with Johnson, Johnson was authorized to assume the presidency. After Kennedy's assassination, the ratification of the 25th Amendment in 1967 finally put codified, which means written down, procedures in place for dealing with an incapacitated president. According to the 25th Amendment, if a president believes he or she is unable to carry out the duties of the office, the president must notify Congress, and the vice president becomes the acting president until the president can resume authority. The amendment would apply in the case when a president is anesthetized for surgery, for example, or perhaps recuperating from a delib debilitating excuse me, illness. In other situations, a president might be incapable of carrying out the duties of office and incapable of notifying Congress. In such a case, the 25th Amendment requires that the vice president and a majority of the cabinet notify Congress, and the vice president becomes the acting president. If a question arises as to whether the president is fit to resume the duties of office, a two-thirds vote of Congress is required for the acting president to remain. Basically, if you know the difference that the Presidential Succession Act of 1947 deals with the president uh, death and the 25th Amendment deals with incapacitation, then you'll be okay on the AP exam.